Hi guys, it's Chuck here again, and here's an update. It's been a couple months since I've updated progress on the uh, on YouTube as far as the uh, rebuild of the 77 Cherokee Chief Project. And so things have advanced in the past couple months, so I figured I'd give you an update for all the do-it-yourselfers at home. Now, what I'm working on in the past couple weeks is building my own rear bumper and swing-out tire carrier for the back of the Jeep. Now, they're, they are commercially available, and I've seen them range everywhere from $500 to $800 U.S., and it's a little pricey for my budget, so I went ahead and did it myself. There wasn't a lot on the uh, on the net as far as plans are concerned for building your own, so I went and pretty much saw what I liked and uh, added what I liked and removed what I didn't like from the design. And uh, I spent some time laying it out uh, on cardboard and got all the dimensions down before I cut the first piece of steel. So I'll run it through you. For those of you uh, who are considering building your first... Uh, rear bumper and swing out carrier for your Jeep. Uh, here's a few tips and hopefully this will help you through the process. It wasn't all that hard but about 90% of the uh, time and energy goes into the planning stage just so you get it right because there are a few places where you can go wrong. So let's uh, flip it around here and we'll take a look at things as we go, okay? Okay, let's zoom out here. Okay, there's, it's about 80% complete right now. There's the uh, rear bumper and swing out with the jerry can holder and the high lift jack mounted on. I'll zoom in here a bit if I can. Let's see what we have. So you get a full idea. Now, I'll walk you through some of the dimensions if you're considering doing this to your own full-size Jeep. Um, some things you want to uh, consider when you're laying things out. All right, let's uh, take a walk forward here if we can. All right, we'll start things off. Okay, the bumper is actually fabricated from four inch by four inch uh, by I believe it was three sixteenths wall steel um, that ran me about forty five dollars if I remember correctly over at the local steel uh, distributor so uh, I beveled out I can't the angle makes it look kinda weird here so I it's it's beveled in on the side there and there's Jack trying to get in the picture. So I did cut a 45 degree in there just simply for design aesthetic reasons. Um, moving up, you have the barrel hinge right here. Let me just kind of back it out right there. And that's really supporting the weight of the swing out. So the length of the actual bumper component is 70 inches from top end to top end. That's 70 inches from there, from the passenger all the way to the driver's side. That's 70 inches, and that was 4 by 4 by 3 16 inch wall stock. Now, moving to the swing out, oh, let me zoom out here a bit here. The swing out bumper was constructed from, I started with a 12 foot length of 2 inch by 2 inch square tube stock, and I believe that was a, if I recall correctly, about a 1 8 inch, it looks like a 1 8 inch wall on there. Yeah, 0.125, I, I forget the math. So we start with 12 foot, cut it down to fit. It's really kind of arbitrary where you want to, how long you want to make it. I mean, given, you know, within uh, three to six inches, you could go longer, you could go shorter. Um, but what I did was I tried to line things up so that they didn't interfere with the tail lights. And the barrel nut just bare, the barrel hinge, sorry, the barrel hinge just barely reaches uh, the backup light there. So that's something you want to consider simply from a safety perspective, okay? Uh, so using 70 inches of 4x4, four four, 12 foot of 2x2, two two, and I added a dual jerry can holder on here, and I'll take a walk over here. Now, this was more or less some scrap angle iron that I had laying around at the time, and I basically just made a box out of it. I welded together a box, and see where it overlaps right here. You're going to have a high end here. I just kind of rounded that off. I gotta admit, I sort of rushed through this end of the project, so I was getting kind of impatient with the whole thing and just wanted this thing done already. And I could have spent another week or so smoothing things out and, and double notching everything so that they meet at a 45, but I really didn't see the point on, uh, for it at that point. Now, here's one of the more significant mods that I made compared to the other designs. What I used here is um, sort of a, a cotter pin which is similar to the kind you'd find in a, a, a tractor supply warehouse or at a uh, any place that deals in uh, trailer supplies uh, where you're going to get um, uh, hit trailer hitches and such like that that's exactly six inches six inches and a quarter long I believe yeah two inches uh, plus four inches and 
down here you'll see where it comes through the pin the pin actually is right there now I did that for a couple reasons there are commercially available latches that uh, are pretty easy on easy off uh, but I have a couple concerns there's a lot of kids in the neighborhood and they see something bright and shiny and and red and they just want to pull on it and I, the last thing I want is for anybody to get hurt or for this thing to swing out as I pull into traffic because some kid came along and pulled on the latch and I just don't want strangers walking by so it's a it's not a, a lot of work to pull it out but it's a uh, it's definitely a, con a conscious effort to have to remove the pin and then actually slide this out. And that actually worked out perfectly. And I think I paid about eight bucks for that pin. Uh, jerry cans are locked down here. Got a couple straps on here. There's a little bit of play on there. I'm going to actually get some ratchet straps on there because uh, I want that thing tied down as tight as possible for a couple reasons. I don't want people walking off with my jerry cans or siphoning gas out uh, when I'm not around or if I'm out on the trail and uh, taking a hike. I don't want anybody coming up and, and stealing my jerry cans. The high lift jack here, I think I paid about $90 at the local four wheel drive uh, supply uh, shop. Uh, that was about $90. All in all, minus, minus the jerry cans, minus the, the high lift jack, are probably in about mm, $120 so far, with the most expensive component really being a $40 barrel hinge, which I bought from A to Z Fabrication, and you can find them on the web they're pretty nice guys over there so you figure fifteen dollars for each each d-ring and this is canadian dollars fifteen dollars for each uh, for each d-ring um i got about uh, forty dollars in the barrel hinge um thirty eight dollars for the twelve foot of two inch square tubing forty five dollars for the four by four uh, which make up the uh, uh bumper and then the jerry can uh, angle iron i just cobbled together it can't be more than say twenty dollars in materials but i just found that out back and and worked it out uh from there now it's kind of incomplete because it's missing the key component which is the actual uh tire mount and i've kind of come up with a solution for now i don't know if it's going to work I'll, I'll work it out later today but i'll, I'll give you a, a run through what's going to look like so let's take it over here jack okay now I still have from the tw original 12 foot I have about maybe 10 inches of 2x2 two two stock left over so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the leftover 2x2 two two stock and come out maybe about 8 inches right about here to, or maybe even less 6 to 8 inches to accommodate uh, the inset of the, of, the, of the tire rim now once that's on I picked up, this is the most expensive part that I picked up, and I think I paid $55 for it at National Four Wheel Drive, was uh, an aluminum uh, hub spacer here with the six bolt configuration. So basically it's going to come out six to eight inches here, and then this is going to mount onto that with a back plate. Uh, probably a triangular back plate is what I'll cut. And the triangular back plate will go from here to here to here to here. That uh, and I'll use probably half inch uh, steel plate, and that half inch steel plate triangle will then mount onto this uh, bracket, or for lack of a better word, uh, bracket, I guess, that will come out six to eight inches. The, the triangle will then go on the end of the two by two stock, and this will then bolt up to the triangle, and from there we'll mount the uh, uh, the spare tire on the back. Well, that's it for today. I'm. I hope you had a pen and you wrote down the list of materials. Again, minus the um, uh, minus the uh, the the um, I can't. I lost my words now. Minus the hardware, like the uh, the D rings, like the like the barrel hinge, and like the uh, uh, the wheel spacer. Again, you're looking at 45, 38, maybe 20 more dollars. You know, under a hundred dollars in material. Uh, I got a couple to to lock the. Uh, uh, the high lift jack on here. I just got a couple uh, serrated uh, uh, nuts on there, and I'll show you one other modification I made that I didn't see on any of the commercially available jacks. Is I took some more angle iron here and I ground it down, and so that you actually have a place where the the high lift high lift jack sits in here, just for alignment purposes, to make sure everything gets lined up and it's seated properly. I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the meantime. I'll be heading back to the shop in a little while. I'll let you guys know how it works out. But that's uh, the status report on the 77 Jeep Cherokee Chief buildup. Take one last look around. And there she is. And we'll go around to the front.
and we'll take a look at the BJ's cliffhanger bumper, which I still like a lot. All right, guys, that's it for now. I'll, uh, I'll uh, check in in the next six hours and hopefully have another video for you. All right, thanks.